Thank you, girl. Jink Uger, over the past couple of months, maybe over a year and a half, actually, at this point, he has been smearing people on the left as right-wingers, as fake leftists, people like Jimmy Dore, people like Glenn Greenwald. Although I, I don't know if I would ever say that Glenn Greenwald is a leftist per se. I don't think he's ever said that. But... You get the idea. Recently, he's added someone else to that list. He's now added Brianna Joy Gray to that list of fake leftists. I kid you not. I have a lot to say about this. So just watch what he said. Let me play the video. And then I'll come back and comment because, oh, Jink, you have some nerve for this one. So, so this was shared by Mediaite. I think that's how you say this, Mediaite. So Jink had an interview with them. Jink Uger slams fake progressives like Brianna Joy Gray, Glenn Greenwald, Jimmy Dore, and Ruben Report for cozying up to Tucker Carlson. First of all, uh, Dave Rubin hasn't been, oops, Dave Rubin hasn't been a, uh, a leftist in a couple of years. So I don't know why he's mentioning him again. <sighs> but listen to what he had to say, you guys. The mainstream media is disgusting in how they shut out progressives. Um, in terms of the right wing, no, no, no. Brianna Joy Gray, unfortunately, uh, is one of the people that are in the now the fake left. And so this has become a whole uh, niche part of the industry. So Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Brianna Joy Gray, and a couple of others in there uh, that are, they, to be fair to Dave Rubin, uh, he started this whole thing. Uh, the fake left saying, oh, well, you know, I, it's just I'm, I'm a classical liberal. I'm a progressive. But it turns out the right wing's right about everything. Okay. So that's the shtick that they do. And they go on Tucker's show and and they dance for them and and so it's disgusting they're not the real left uh, and here's how you can tell they never disagree with tucker the mainstream media is disgusting in how they shut out progressives uh let's have a conversation so jink uger is calling other people fake leftists Union busting Jink Uger. The same Jink Uger who did not want TYT employees to start a union. He's calling other people fake leftists. Now, I can't speak on Dave Rubin because like I said, Dave Rubin hasn't been a leftist in the past couple years. So I don't know why he brought up his name again. Maybe it's just a little bit of a... Uh, smite here a little bit because Dave Rubin used to work with TYT. Jimmy Dore also used to work at TYT. A lot of people started at TYT or came through there at some point or another. And a lot of people have left. I wonder why. So Jink Uger, he's correct when he says that mainstream media is terrible about you know, shutting out progressives. He's right about that. But this is where he goes off the rails. If you want to look at his expression on his face right now, Jink Uger to me, he just looks like an actor. I don't feel like he's genuine. I don't feel like he's sincere. And I haven't felt that way in a couple of years. He just seems like he's acting to me. Jink just wants money, just wants money. Um, in terms of the right wing, no, no, no. Brianna Joy Gray, unfortunately, uh, is one of the people that are in the now the fake left. And uh, so this has become a whole uh, niche part of the industry. So. So he adds Brianna Joy Gray to that list. And the reason that he gives later on about going on to Tucker Carlson's show, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the chat. But I don't remember seeing Brianna Joy Gray on Tucker Carlson's show. Even if she did go on Tucker Carlson's show, who cares? 
if you're going on there to preach to people about Medicare for all, to tell people, yes, we need to cancel student loan debt, and this is the reason why, Tucker Carlson has an audience of over 5 million people. That is an outlet where you can get leftist ideas and policies across to millions and millions of people. Jink has also done the same rhetoric with people that go into Joe Rogan's show. And sometimes I have to stop and wonder, maybe Jink's just mad because he's not going onto those shows. Now, I'm not saying I agree with Tucker Carlson. I don't agree with Tucker Carlson on 99.8% of things. But if you're given the opportunity to tell millions and millions of people, this is why we need universal health care. This is why we need to have these policies passed. Why would you turn down that opportunity? I thought the whole idea of being on the left was to increase the left because we're small in this country. I thought the whole idea was to get this message across to as many people as possible, whether there's a campaign attached to it or not. You're not going to do that if you only talk to people on the left, which I've mentioned is very small. So let him go on. Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Brianna Joy Gray, and a couple of others in there. Uh, that are, to be fair to Dave Rubin, uh, he started this whole thing. Uh, the fake left saying, oh, well, you know, I, it's just I'm, I'm a classical liberal. I'm a progressive. But it turns out the right wing's right about everything. Okay. That's an exaggeration. I haven't heard any of those people say that the right is right about everything. They may agree with some of the things that they've said, but do they agree with them on everything? No, they don't. And I've also seen them criticize them on certain issues as well. So he's exaggerating here. This is something I told you he's an actor. Don't trust it. Hey, so that's the shtick that they do and they go on Tucker's show and, and they dance for him and, and so it's disgusting. They're not the real left. Uh, and here's how you can tell. They never disagree with Tucker. That's not true. So you see, it's just... Let's talk about something for just a second in reference to Jink. And then there's another, there's another uh, audio, actually, I want to play for you because there's something else that he said on that interview that people haven't shown yet or most people I've seen so far have not shown yet. So let's talk about something. Oh, there he is. I want you to look at this face. I feel like someone like Jink is, is kind of desperate. Now I went over TYT's numbers about a month or so ago, and I showed you that they have not gained any subscribers. They're not gaining. TYT is tanking. A lot of people have stopped watching them. Couple of reasons. Force the vote was a big one. Some people turned away because of that. They wouldn't even listen to their own viewers. And the majority of their viewers were for forcing the vote. They've gone on these rants to like smear people, Aaron Mate, Jimmy Dore, people that have left TYT. Anna went on this rant recently about Democrats, but she's still telling you to vote for Democrats, tried to come back and lie on the next show and say that she was criticizing Republicans when she was also criticizing Democrats as well. This is an act. Listen, I used to watch TYT too back in the day. They have changed. I don't know. Maybe it was that $20 million that they took from Jeffrey Katzenberg, but they have changed. Now, when people like him go on to say that people like Brianna Joy Gray are fake leftists, I want to explain something to you. I think part of the problem that we have on the left is that we have allowed the TYT network, and I say network, not just that show, but everybody up under that TYT network, we allowed them to define what it means to be a leftist. We allowed them to define what it means to be progressive. We did. They were one of the first big independent media networks. You gotta remember, 
Jink was a co-founder of Justice Democrats. That's the model that they go by. And when you start talking outside of that model, they're going to smear you. See, as long as you're telling people we need to put progressives through the Democratic Party, as long as you're telling people that it's mainly the Republicans' fault, yes, we need to primary these corporate Democrats, but the Republicans, it's 98% their fault. Once you get away from those talking points, and once you start telling people Maybe we shouldn't look at these issues as left versus right. Maybe we need to look at the class issue, which is something I say a lot. Maybe we need to focus on the, the, the top 0.01%. And maybe we need to talk about the working class people and poor people and talking about uniting and bringing those people together on both sides. Doesn't matter if you're conservative or Democrat. Because if you're poor, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, if you're poor, it really doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right. You're still poor. Once you take the focus away from that Justice Democrat strategy and you start focusing on the real issue, you start focusing on the money, you start talking about how maybe some of the things that some of the conservatives are saying maybe, hey, maybe they're right on this one issue. Then they come after you. And that's what people like Jink has been doing, Anna Kasparian has been doing, Humanist Report has been doing, because you are now a threat. Because now you're telling people, hey, maybe this strategy isn't working out. Maybe we should actually try something different. Can't do that. They don't feel you can do that. They don't feel that's the progressive way because again, we allowed TYT, that whole network to define what it means to be progressive. So let's talk about being progressive. How are you a leftist, Jink, if you're against unions? You didn't want your own employees to have a union. So if you go on praising about Chris Smalls and what he did with the Amazon workers, but you yourself are a union buster. I would say that you're a fake leftist. Let's talk about that. If you say that you're against corporate money and you call out corporate politicians, but you took $20 million of corporate money, I would say you're the fake leftist. And you notice how their talking points started to change after that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the fact how you've been telling people to do this same strategy for years, and it's not really helping the American people. During a time when there was a pandemic, during the time right now where we have inflation, people are suffering and struggling, and anyone that comes and criticizes the squad and we say that they're not doing what they need to do, that we're not getting anything, any improvement in our lives, we're fake leftists or they'll smear us and say that we're right wing. Because they see you now as a threat. And this is what's now happening to Brianna Joy Gray. And I knew this day was coming. Because as someone who, thankfully I've never met Jink, but as someone who's been saying this for a long time about the class issue and about how we need to focus more on that instead of left versus right, people have smeared me constantly. I've been called right wing. I've been called a grifter, which not really grifter much. I've been called uh, not really a fake, like a fake leftist, just like what Jink is just saying now. I've been called all those things. And now they're doing that to Bree too. And I knew this day would come. So do I feel that Brianna Joy Gray is a fake leftist? No, I don't think she's a fake leftist. I don't agree with her on political strategy, but I don't think she's a fake leftist. Jink is projecting here. Now I want to go ahead and show you this video got 249,000 views. 
Over 249,000 people received this message. And if we want to talk about some of the things that Jink has done in reference to the left movement, bro, you didn't even want to force the vote for Medicare for all during a pandemic. You lied to your audience and told them that McCarthy would become speaker when that was not true. So who's really the fake leftist? You didn't want the people to hold the politicians accountable to hold their feet to the fire, to get them to do what they said that they would do for us. You didn't want people to do that. Why? You didn't want to hold them accountable, Jink, because you want to continue to sell this lie to people that we need to put progressives through the democratic party. You wanted to continue to do that because that's what makes him money. Who's the fake leftist? You say you care about healthcare. I'm sticking on the healthcare issue for a minute. You say you care about healthcare. Why did you smear the marches for Medicare for all? Why did you smear the marches for Medicare for all? I thought you cared about healthcare. Didn't see you at a march. Didn't see you try to organize any march. No, you came in and you smeared it. Jink is not your friend. This is what happens when we let rich people in this space create the narrative of what it means to be left and what it means to be a part of a movement. This is what happens. The fact that you would come after Bernie Sanders' press secretary. Really? Now he went on to say more, and this is the part I think some of you may not have seen in this interview. Actually, yeah, I'll show you this first and then I'm gonna show you what Glenn Greenwald said because he had something funny too. And then I'll show you Bree's response because she did respond. So shout out to Case Study QB because he shared this. And so I don't know if everyone realizes this, but this was a small part of a larger interview. And so here comes Jink on this interview. He's going to criticize leftist commentators about the algorithm on YouTube. Listen to this. And in terms of why YouTube was the home in the beginning is because they were the first uh, and they've always been the most popular. And part of the reason for that is they're really, really not biased. They, they will not put a thumb on the scale for anyone, okay? And I've seen other platforms do it. It's very frustrating uh, and, and YouTube won't do it. They really let the audience decide and that's why um, it's, it's probably the largest one out there now. There have been, at, at least from the left, there have been criticisms of the way YouTube works and the shows that are, are popular on YouTube from, you know, Steven Crowder's show to Joe Rogan. What do you make of criticisms of those platforms allow for independent media that perhaps doesn't have the guardrails that traditional media does? Yeah. So there's two different questions in there. One is about the algorithm. One is about the guardrails. Um, on the business. algorithms, I'm a businessman. I, I run the TYT network. I'm the C, I'm the founder. I'm the CEO of it. So I understand the business uh, dynamics behind the algorithm decisions that all the platforms make. And overall, I'd say get off their ass. Uh, algorithms are super hard. And so if you set it a certain way, it advantages old shows. And we want that because we're the oldest show on YouTube. Right. Is if you set the algorithm in a different way, it advantages new shows, which is, by the way, where they are now. That's why like people think it's just a matter of popularity. And honestly, popularity has a huge uh, poor part to play. The characters uh, have a huge part to play. But the algorithm has an enormous part to play as well. So when they switched the algorithm, for example, on YouTube to favor new shows, uh, that gave Crowder a huge advantage he was not aware of, right? Um, and so because he was a newer show. And that's okay. That's life, okay? And they got to make those business decisions. And to the uh, people on the left that are complaining about those algorithms, it is what it is. You either win or you lose. So mm. get in the game and figure out what the algorithm is and win it. If you don't... For people on the left who are complaining about those algorithms, it is what it is. Get in the game 
You either win or lose. That came from Jink Uger. You're just going to sit on the sideline and cry. And that's not going to help anybody, okay? So I don't give a damn what the algorithm is. We'll beat Crowder. We'll beat all of them. And I, I'm not even a tiny bit worried about the Ben Shapiro's and the right wings of the world. There's no question we're going to beat them all uh, and fairly easily by that. You know what was interesting, what he left out of that conversation when he's talking about the algorithm? He doesn't mention that TYT is on the corporate algorithm. He leaves that out. And so he's putting this message out to other leftist commentators to make it seem like it's their fault that they're not working hard. They need to figure out the algorithm and go from there. He's leaving out the fact that YouTube is heavily suppressing independent media. It was not doing that four years ago. He leaves that out. He makes it seem like if TYT did it, then anyone else can do it too. This is not true. Why would he not mention to them that he's on the corporate algorithm? Why do I get recommended TYT videos and I don't even watch TYT anymore? I haven't watched them in years. Why am I getting those recommendations? Because they're on the corporate algorithm. Kim Iverson explained this in greater detail when she came on my show about how it works. The ones that they consider to be a real network. He leaves out the fact that he's able to discuss certain types of content and certain types of news stories that the rest of us have those videos taken down for if we discuss those exact same stories. TYT gets to keep their stories up. Why is that? He leaves that out. So he's lying. He's lying. Now, Glenn Greenwald did respond to what Jink had to say. <laughs> Glenn Greenwald has snarky responses. That's why I laugh sometimes, but he responded, the nation's single dumbest pundit, and I mean that literally and earnestly. There may be people more malicious, but there's simply nobody more stupid, more cognitively dense, decrees that Bernie Sanders 2020 press secretary is part of the fake left. Now that's coming from Glenn Greenwald. <laughs> then Dixon comes in. He responds to Glenn Greenwald. Have you heard yourself on Tucker lately? You see this, this is the problem. This is why we don't win on the left. This is why we don't win. Now, Brianna Joy Gray did respond. And so let's hear what she had to say. Too often efforts to make life harder for working people are bipartisan efforts. And partisan sniping allows establishment politicians to pass off blame like a hot potato, while no one is ever held accountable. Is Biden doing enough to address inflation? No. But are Republicans offering a viable solution? Also, no. Moreover, those of us in the media who are willing to point this out are often attacked by establishment punditry, accused of being in the tank for the other side, even as our criticisms are bipartisan. Wanting to hold Biden accountable to his campaign promises might get you called the Candace Owens of the left. At least if I've been called that too, by the way. They've called me that too. I'm like, do you really listen to what I say on this show? <laughs> like, I'm a socialist. Are you paying attention? Seriously. You're black. Explaining why Tucker Carlson is appealing to so many viewers recently caused the co-founder of a popular left media site to accuse me of not being a leftist at all yesterday. The mainstream media is disgusting in how they shut out <laughs> progressives. Um, in terms of the right wing, no, no, no. Brianna Joy Gray, unfortunately, uh, is one of the people that are in the now the fake left. And uh, so this has become a whole uh, niche part of the industry. So Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald, Brianna Joy Gray, and a couple of others in there. Oh, well, <laughs> here's the thing. I don't care what you call me, a leftist, a fake leftist, a progressive, left populist, an independent, a socialist. I've used most of those labels at some point or another. 
What's important is less how you define folks than that we all collectively keep our eye on the following. Where do elected officials get their money? Who's paying them? Are media figures merely critics or are they offering affirmative solutions to the real problems Americans across the political spectrum have identified? Are excuses like how do you pay for it leveraged evenly or only when it comes to helping out American workers, not when it comes to bailing out banks or funding regime change wars? Do all the reasons floated for why a middle-class life is inaccessible today make sense in light of the fact that just 50 years ago our country was structured differently, taxes on the rich were higher, social spending was higher, unionization was higher, and the middle class was living easier? Could it be that the people telling you things can't get better are self-serving, regardless of whether there is an R or a D behind their names? It is imperative that we keep talking to each other, that we not go into our respective silos, and that we treat everyone who not not treat everyone who disagrees with us as a as a mortal enemy. As careful, they're gonna come for you now. They're really gonna come for you now. But it's true. Like this is what we've been saying, especially over at RBN. You have to talk to people who disagree with you. You can't just talk to people who are on the left. For whatever reason, people like Jink tend to think that that is a problem that you are not supposed to talk to those people, that you're only supposed to talk to them if you're having a debate with them, that you can't agree with them on any policy, on any idea, or that means that you're a fake leftist. You have to stay in your bubble. And that's why we don't win. This is exactly why we do not win on the left. If you think that you're gonna win, especially electorally, by only focusing on leftists, you're sadly mistaken. I can tell you from experience, having lived in the South, there are plenty of people in rural America, down South, that agree with you on some of the issues. They may say they're conservative, they may say they're independent, but when you start talking to them about healthcare, when you start talking to them about debt, when you talk to them about the issues, you might be surprised how many of them agree with what you're saying. And this is why I continue to tell people you have to stick to the issues. Make sure you focus on class because poor people, whether they're Republican, Democrat, or independent, the one thing they all have in common is that they are being taken advantage of by a capitalist system that only looks out for the people at the top. They're all at the bottom. They are being exploited. And I think if you focus on the class issue and stop labeling these, uh, Jink Uger, as progressive or leftist issues, I think you will reach more people. When we talk about universal health care, Medicare for all, single payer, put it all in one, whatever you want to call it today, when we talk about canceling student loan debt, when we talk about paid family leave, when we talk about paid sick leave, which should be a given in the wealthiest country in the world, when we talk about these issues, those are class issues. They are not left, right issues. We have allowed people like TYT to make them left issues. Everybody should want to have health care in this country. Everybody should want to be able to have a paid family leave to spend time with their family. Everybody should want sick leave. If you get sick, you should be able to still get paid and not have to worry about the fact that you're out of work for a couple of days and you're not going to get paid for it. That's why some people go to work sick because they still need to get paid. And if you change the framing, and if you talk about them as class issues, I can guarantee you, you talk to some of the people that canvass for Bernie Sanders and they will tell you, some of those people that may be on the right in those poor and low income communities, you might be able to flip them. You talk to Nick from RBN, he was in South Carolina flipping conservative voters because he stuck to the issues and he focused on class. Jink doesn't understand that. Jink Uger is rich. 
Jink Uger is not affected. He doesn't want you to have those conversations with those people because he doesn't want you to prove that there is some type of class solidarity, even with people on the right. He wants you to stay in your bubble because that's what helps TYT. That's what helps his network. Some of my colleagues in left media might recommend. When we do that, we stop being a community. We stop being an American people. We've already lost our democracy, according to the fellows at Princeton. If we completely lose our sense of belonging to an American community that can communicate with each other, that strives to be better together, what's left? This isn't a left-right conflict we're in, it's a top-down one. More and more people are realizing this, and that's something to be hopeful about. The trick now is to not let bad faith actors exploit this sincere desire for working class politics and use it to deliver more of the same. So I did this because I, I felt as though. You're a fake leftist. You I, have to vacate that <laughs> chair for someone else. I'm sorry, that was kind of funny. I know. But these kind of purity <laughs> tests, they get trotted out as I've observed them. Every time there is someone who is even making an attempt to understand the other side, to dialogue with the other side, and to come with solutions, and to be willing to be critical of one's own party. Yeah. That's what sets people off. That's what sets the Soledad O'Briens of the world off. Not anything substantively I've said, because they, ne they never talk about anything specific. It's the idea that by even being in dialogue with other people, you are somehow, by definition, throwing your own community and interest under the bus. Yeah. Uh but those commentators, commentators like um, O'Brien, like she knows that that's not what's really happening. But again, she's kind of owned too. a lot of these people that work for mainstream media. You have to see. I can show that video in just a second. You have to see just how much BlackRock and Vanguard have invested in mainstream media. Then you'll understand why they have the talking points that they have. Their biggest fear is people coming together in class solidarity. That's why they continue to keep us divided left versus right. When was the last time something like that happened? Probably the New Deal, maybe, right? People came together under class solidarity. FDR decided, wait a minute, people are putting pressure on me. I need to do something for the people. So he implemented all these policies to help the people. Now we can argue over who was actually helped in more detail in another stream. And me and Marcus have talked about that, but they put pressure on him to do so. And I bet you after a new deal, they were like, can't let that happen again. Can't let people come together over class solidarity again. No. So they keep you divided over left versus right. And while you're so focused on that, you don't realize the people at the top are the ones screwing everybody over, regardless if you're left or right. Our uh, Rising Friday's co-host Ryan Grimm had a great article in The Intercept this week about the kind of struggle session mindset that prevails in some of these progressive activist circles that's like like a caricature, you know, of what you would of what someone on my side would say is going on. And then you really go, oh, there's a lot of that going on, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the problem is that it's elite capture. Yeah, it's these people at these institutions. It's not. Uh, what I think is a broader authentic left movement. It's these, you know, kids at Oberlin or whatever who are populating a lot of these left groups and these media institutions that have elite interest because they are elites and they are co-opting the priorities of the identity groups that they might technically belong to, but they don't have the same interests as those groups. So, you know, affluent you know, black people on TV or affluent LGBT people on TV focus the conversation toward things that aren't the immediate interest of working class people in all of those groups. And I talk about this with Pascal Robert actually on my. Because they're class loyal first. That's why I always tell you guys too, when it comes to like black celebrity, they're class loyal first. Don't get it twisted. Because as soon as their money's affected, they're out. I've seen it too many times. Too many times. My podcast today, who he gets into the, the history of how movements have been co-opted in exactly that way and how identity oftentimes collapses the real meaningful differences, class differences between the people who are advocating for these groups at the top and what's really going on down on the, on the streets. 
Yeah, I, the the effect is pretty clear at this point that working class people feel a declining affinity for the Democratic Party. They are increasingly being captured by the Republican Party, which, you know, from your perspective, it should should not happen given the relative uh, positions of the parties. And I mean, it, it speaks to I think I know we've talked about this a lot, but it. it it, it, it just is the effect, right, that the many working class people feel that they don't trust the Democratic Party or they've overreached on cultural issues or they don't you know, trust what their policies are for taking care of their families or whatever it is. And uh, and that's a huge problem for the Democratic Party because then it's just going to, it's becoming increasingly reliant on right, the, the affluent white liberals. And that's by And this movement. This whole leftist space, if you think about it, it's led by rich, affluent people. That's that's a big part of the problem. It's led by rich, affluent people. It needs to be led by people that are working. You need to have some working class people in there. You need to have some people in there that are poor. You need to have some people in there that are middle class. But if you look at the actual left media space that led this whole Bernie train, they are affluent people. So when Bernie Sanders did not pan out, those people were still fine. The people who gave their last $10, their last $5 to Bernie Sanders because they believed that he would actually fight for health care for them, those people are not fine. That's the problem. By choice. Right. That's by choice. They don't, they've chosen not to respect their base. They've chosen to write them off as stupid rubes right. who don't know better and, and none they, of us like the policies of affluent white liberals nobody nobody, nobody, nobody does <laughs> nobody, nobody does. does it's the most uniting thing of all and they don't they don't trust that if they were actually just to deliver that they could actually mm -hmm. best republicans on some of these um culture issues and then meanwhile the bar is so low that republicans can get a, away with yeah, performatively that, signaling populist politics that it, and they can get away with massively but I would also say, too, I think one thing that is left out of that conversation is that, again, it's not just affluent white liberals. It's also affluent white leftists. I think we need to acknowledge this in our own space. There's a lot of criticisms that can be made about left space right now. And you guys know me if you've been watching me for a long time. Like one of the things I focus on heavily is class and the money. And I'm looking where some of these. Some of these people, where the money coming from, even some of these progressives per se, you have to be careful about that. Like I said, it's for some people, it's just become a money maker for them. They got rich off of it. And at the end of the day, even though they may care about those issues, they're not willing to fight for it. So that's my question for someone like Jink Uger. You say that you care about those issues that you support those issues and so do a lot of left politicians. But my question to you is, are you willing to fight for those issues? Because from what I've seen, you're not really willing to fight for it. You're not willing to go to no protests, no marches, no nothing. You didn't want people to force the vote for Medicare for all because you were afraid. You didn't want to hold the squad accountable. You lied to your audience about force the vote. You don't want to get involved in any type of direct action. You just want to smear it instead. And your belief that the way we got to do everything is through electoral politics. So just because you support health care, just because you support Medicare for all, that's not enough for people like me anymore. I don't want to hear that you support it. I want to hear will you fight for it. That's the litmus test for me. It's easy to say you support something, but how many of you are willing to fight for it?